Brown dose. <laughs> All, right. <coughs> All right, we'll start again. Brown dose. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for joining us again. I got one of my good friends here named Jonathan, Jonathan Woodard, and we actually worked together several years ago back in Dalton, Georgia at an assisted living community of all things. And we're gonna to talk to you about how in the world do you end up working at an assisted living community? Well, you've probably driven by them a lot. There's some probably in your city, in your neighborhood, and they look like very, very small nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And they are just like that step down from a nursing home. You've got caregivers there, you've got a dining room, you've got a bus driver, you got administrative people, and then you got salespeople. And so Jonathan was our sales guy for the assisted living community that I worked at. And so take it away, man. So you joined the assisted living community probably just like the place where you work, you know, there's lots of good, interesting characters and the assisted living community did not disappoint. And, uh, <laughs> literally, I, literally we could have made a show. It, it, it was very show worthy. It, it, well, we're making a show. show about it tonight. If that tells you. Something. Sure. So we had a tremendous, uh, introduction several minutes ago and that was deleted somehow <laughs> through probably that Chinese, uh, space, <laughs> space ball, that, that, that <laughs> Chinese space moon that's flying over and nobody's doing nothing about it. It took away our, 14 minute solid introduction. So it was solid. Anyway, we'll just do it again. But uh, so anyway, lots of great characters there at the assisted living place. You've got uh, caregivers, which is the most important. You've got really good caregivers there. And then you've probably got two or three that are not so good, but they know each other. So they just kind of turn the other other eye or the other cheek, you know, when a bunch of caregiving shenanigans are taking place. Well, and, and sort of, the, we, we talked about this before, the structure, you have, a, you know, an executive director. He's the guy that's managing everything. Or lady doesn't matter, and and then you have you have like his assistant, who is basically number two in charge, um, and then you have somebody like me who's sales, who I'm not I'm not part of operations, I'm part of sales, if you will, um, and then you've got nursing, and then you got the caregivers, and and so but the executive director's trying to he's trying to get everybody to work on this on the same page, and sometimes ops operations and sales don't in the assisted living world don't really uh, mesh well, and so uh, there's a lot of disagreements between. Uh, who qualifies and who doesn't uh, to make it into an assisted living facility? Qualifies as a, a resident to move in. Yes. So, so I thought of one the other day and Jason comes to me, the, is the executive director, and he goes, Michael, I need you to go pick up. And even if I tried to guess her name, it will still be the wrong name. <laughs> Let's just say her name was Cecilia. Uh, Marcia. Marcia, yeah. <laughs> Mike, I need you to go pick up Marcia. And I was like, okay, it was like 11 a.m. And he's like, yeah, she's really late for work. And I think they started their shift at 7 a.m. or 6.45. Oh, yeah, like, they started at 7.45. And yeah. I'm like, 11 a.m.? And I'm like, okay, okay, all right. Yep. So you're 8, 9, 10, you're four hours late. And then I've got to come get you, you know? And we need her. We, we need Marsha. We need Marsha. And so I go... And, uh, and it was, and it, you, you've got your good staff and then you got your problems. Yeah. And then this one was a problem. I'm like, we're going to go get her, you know, like we, we can't just finish out the day here with us. You know, <laughs> she's <laughs> the, your worst employee is this important. I know. So I, was, I go get her, I go pick her up and this, and, and so I went into, so they live in a low income project department. And, uh, so, which is fine. I was in one too. And so anyway, I show up. The problem is, is I'm still in a suit. <laughs> so I look like the men in black character coming to this, to this housing. Detective section. Allen coming in. <laughs> and so I'm knocking on this girl's door, knocking on like, don't make me wait. You're already four hours late. Like you, you should be, I should see you at the street. You should be just jumping in. I should just be coasting and you just hop on in here. I'm knocking on the girl's door, knocking, 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 knocking. And nobody's coming to the door. And I, if I remember right, I remember calling Jason and I'm like, there's nobody here. Are you sure it's apartment G or whatever it is? <laughs> and I'm just banging on the door. And then he's like, yeah, we're on the phone with her. She's getting ready. I'm like, oh, you're getting ready. She, he comes to the door. So her, her boy or significant other, her boyfriend comes to the door. Whatever, whatever so it was. <laughs> whatever. He opens the door and he's like, this white dude, it's white dude here with this suit on here at the front door, Marsha. Who is this guy? And he's like, not is it is he a cop? Yeah. Or is he an attorney? <laughs> or social what? services? He didn't, he wasn't mean or anything, but he just didn't know like what's up. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, that's my ride to work. And I'm going, Okay, you maybe could can we word it differently? I mean, I'm not your ride to work. <laughs> I'm your because who knows what I, I mean. If I'd have thought that, I'm like, I'm not what? your ride, like that's, that's my that's my side <laughs> piece, giving me a ride to work. <laughs> He dresses nice. He's a good guy. He smells good. So, and so she comes to the door and she's wearing nothing but a, just a, a long t-shirt and she's kind of pregnant. So her belly's just yeah. out there. 
and her hair's just, it's kind of in this one side. And she ain't no more near ready than the man on the moon. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'll be in the in the van. I'll just. <laughs> oh, you went pick her up in the van? I believe so. In I think the so. Beach, in the van. In our company <laughs> minivan. Oh, gosh. Why do I want to bring my own vehicle? No, I, but anyway. I don't yeah. blame you. So uh, I think she finally came out about 10, 12 minutes later. Like she just literally just put on clothes. She didn't do anything. And so she just comes out and, and I think she kind of fell asleep on the way to the to the place, which is just 12 minutes down the road. <laughs> yeah, well, if that. And so I'm like, okay. And I come in, I'm like, okay, guys, here's Marsha. Here's your, here's your A starter. Well, see, here's the other thing too. We would have, that was fun. You, you, I mean, you had to sell like that. I mean, it was, it was wild, man. I mean, it it was, was wild. Well, and here's the other thing. And I could understand why they want to take naps because our, our cook, who was a little crazy, a little crazy. It's it's how the first time I learned how to, to pronounce Ringgold, Georgia. Right? right. I was trying to remember where she was. So so we you don't pronounce it Ringgold, Georgia. In fact, that's where Dolly Parton got married, by the way. A little fun fact for you folks out there. Um, it's not pronounced Ringgold. It's pronounced Ringo. Ringo, Georgia. Ringo. And so this lady was special. She was great. She We always had a great time with her. She's on my Facebook, so I'll, I'll tag her. She yeah. loved this. Oh, uh, she was she was fantastic. But but uh, we had we had time. Yeah, Lord. But she, let me tell you something. The beef stroganoff just <coughs> hit different. It was and, a painkiller. And it hit different as, I mean, it was an elephant tranquilizer is what it was. It had this narcotic effect to it. <laughs> and I thought word. it was just me. <clears throat> but she would, one of the benefits, one of the many benefits of being at assisted living community is your lunch is usually free because mm-hmm. they're feeding the residents. And so they'll usually make you up some soup and salad or grilled cheese sandwich. And it saves you an hour and a half from going to go get uh, it. Well, and money. Yeah. There's no charge for it at all. Yeah. And so Lori was really good about dishing up whatever leftovers they had uh, for some of the staff people. And I remember one of her specialties being beef stroganoff. And after a couple, I think it was maybe it was every Thursday was, it was a routine. Yeah, yeah. It was a set menu. And the second or third time I had the beef stroganoff, I was like, oh my God, this is it. There's something in this because I am, (laughs) I am falling asleep at the end. I can't even stay awake with this right now. And I thought it was just me maybe or whatever. And so I asked the guys, I'm like, are you guys passing out after the beef struggling off? <laughs> and sure enough, they was. And so it was, uh, man, it was it, something it, powerful. What, Lori, whatever you put into it. Let's, well, let's and here's a, our residents, literally, they would come in there. Let's say they weighed, let's say you had an average lady that weighed, you know, 120 pounds or whatever. Literally within within 60 days, that residence go from 120 to probably 140 pounds. <laughs> because, and that's a little exaggeration, but they would gain weight because one, they, were they getting, needed it. Yeah, they needed it. They were getting three square meals a day, which is good. But I think Lori, I don't know what Lori did, but I think she did just to keep the residents calm and sane because uh, it would, it, everybody went nap time after after beef stroganoff day. I mean, goodness gracious. And we had reports to do. We're working in Excel spreadsheets uh-huh. and your head was just like, you can't even keep it up. It was like a, yeah, I don't know. Maybe John was eating the stroganoff first thing in the morning at 6 Well, John, didn't, yeah, like I said, he didn't miss many meals. Um, I, I will say this, the, our, uh, the uh, this, uh, turkey and dressing, turkey and stuffing that she, uh-huh. though that was, that was money too. That was, that put a hurt on you. <laughs> um, that would put her. But we had, you know, it's crazy. You know, in these in these facilities, they would have people eat, and and the tables would only be could only fit so many, and we couldn't move the tables because the residents would get upset because they had their own special group of folks yeah. that they wanted to that they wanted to uh, sit with, and so uh, they would sit, and we would try to like, oh well, here's a new resident, you know, I'm the sales. Let's make friends and. Oh no, no, it was like the Jets and the Sharks, <laughs> <laughs> West Side Story. I mean, it was not it was not happening. So. Uh, there was all kinds of little, we had all kinds of little, uh, uh, spiffs, if you will, between the, between the residents. That's just yeah, that's funny. part of community living. I, <laughs> I remember when, and, and you know, and, and some of these old, older folks, you know, unfortunately they've got uh, some late stage Alzheimer's or dementia, but, uh, it still, they had a sense of humor to themselves about it. And I, I loved it when the guy accused you of stealing his polo uh, shirts because they uh, would sit in this common area. And so Jonathan is going down the hallway up and down. I'm going up and down. Jason's going up and down. And so one day he looks up and he goes, that guy's got my shirt on. (laughs) (laughs) And whenever he was so funny, like whenever he spoke up, I'd kind of stop what I was doing and kind of, you know, just, uh, is there something we can help you with? Or, 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 you know, say what's going on. Yeah. And he's like, that guy, (laughs) your friend. That sob stole my shirt and he's wearing it. I can see him right now. And uh, man, it was it was it was pretty. He, fun. he let the explicitives fly when he found out that that, or in his mind, he thought that I had stolen his shirt, and so I couldn't get away from him. I mean, everywhere I go, he would he was telling you, everybody. You were that, known as the guy that was stealing his. Clothes. I was the thief in the in the uh, you know, and I had a probably I mean I just had a probably regular polo on. Of course, I did have to wear you know we had to wear collared shirts every day. 
uh, but uh, which was you know fine. But my gosh, yeah, that was your. Uh, I'll say this: if you the 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 staff for an assisted living facility, the staff is <laughs> now. I'm not talking about. The, the corporate staff, well, I mean, we were considered, I guess, corporate, if you, is that, I mean, I, I would. Yeah, we're still on the community level. Yeah, we are still on the community level, but. We've not completely went to the dark side. I mean, you know, I, the, the stories that come that, that really generate are from the staff, because from our maintenance guy to caregivers, and it's like you said, we had two just unbelievable caregivers, but they would never. Two really terrible caregivers. And then we had the two. Worst, the worst in the world. Worst, I mean, just, and they all switched, and they, it was like, and, and so the drama that would come out out of this was just epic. I mean, that's why we say, you know, that they, they had a show, The Office. They could literally have a, a show called, you know, Assistant, whatever, I mean, however they name it, but it, yeah. it it is comical. I mean, absolutely. And it's comical between the residents and the caregivers and the families and the caregivers because we had that one lady that, that um, her mom came every day and she, uh, she just yelled all the time, the, the, the resident. And her, her car, she drove this old Volvo and her car was stacked to the brim of just junk in her car. I don't know if you remember that or not. And, it's it's coming back to me. I now. mean, and so this lady would pull up and she pulled the front, and I don't even know how she got into the, the driver's seat because there was stuff <laughs> that's just spilling over. And so she would want to take her 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 daughter or excuse me her mom out to a you know whatever you know lunch or something, and she couldn't even get her into the passenger seat. I mean, it was it was a junk. It was like <laughs> the clampets in, in an old brown Volvo. I mean, I mean, it was just you know so. To see some of this stuff was was uh, it has been etched in my mind forever. It was hilarious. Forever. So you had Jonathan in sales, me as the number two, and Jason was the executive director, and there was so much corporate pressure put on these assisted living with any business. You want to you want to get revenue. You want to make a profit. You want to take you want to sell a good product. You want to take care of the people that handles it. But so within the assisted living community, we reported to a corporate structure oh. that had so much pressure on Jonathan and Jason, <laughs> because number one, we're we're a community that's lost revenue because of low occupancy, low, low people, mm -hmm. you know, not enough people living there, and then you had the fallout from that, from shutting down oh. a, a section of that building. So if you had twelve apartments, you're now missing out on, you know, f f four or five thousand dollars times twelve apartments. Yeah, and so they were. Y'all's faces were so red just from the blood pressure, just from the stress of just the emails, not the job itself. Sales and working with older people, that's the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. But the pressure these two guys were under and their faces were so blood red. And what kept them alive was some of the <laughs> was some of the epic drama that came from these frontline workers. Oh. And I would be around it more. So at the end of every day, we called it our man's meeting or the four o'clock yeah. or whatever we had. And it was just us three. And it would be like, Michael, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> or you would hear something and you would go into Jason's office and you'd be like, Jason, I got one. For you no. you got to hear this. And, and Jason, and his face would almost be like, tell me something good. Tell me something it's happy. Tell me yes. something positive. And uh, it, re it really well, made a big difference. No, I mean, that's, and that's the thing. It's like you, you had to have, find some of the silver linings in that, in that job. Because people in that world, they, they actually really love what they do. And because they're not making the best money, they're just not, and they're having to deal with sometimes angry residents. They're definitely dealing with sometimes angry, you know, uh, uh, caretaker or not caretakers, but family members of these residents. And so, but the drama that would unfold with all this, you just it, you had to have that because if not, you would have you'd wanted to kill yourself. I mean, literally, it was just you just and I say that you know jokingly, obviously, but it's just like your your uh, your mind would just you it would just go nuts. I mean, literally, you drive yourself crazy. Um, and so, I mean, we had a guy, we had a, a maintenance guy. And so before we started every day, you know, he talked about sort of the end of the day, the, the, the Monday, you know, the stand up meeting we would have. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. We had to be there. And we, it was basically a glorified roll call is what it was, but we had to go over everything that we were doing. We had to go over patient meds. We'd have to go all this stuff. And it was, I, it was no sense. I could have literally, what I had to say in about a 15 second window, I could have just emailed and it would have been okay. But no, everybody had to be there. We had to sign in to show that we were there. Um, and it was just, it was, it was abysmal. We had a maintenance guy, very nice guy, but he was, uh, big dude, he's a big boy, big boy, hadn't missed many meals. Um, probably a golden corral regular, I would, <laughs> I would say. Um, but he would get there to the Monday meetings and we had these sort of just relaxed chairs, if you will. And we'd all sit in and he would sit down and it, I, we timed it when it was less than six, it was less, yeah, it was less than 60 seconds. seconds and he would be falling asleep. He'd be out. I mean, just on his, his head would be falling in you and. 
you would look at it and be like, okay, that's a health issue. This guy's not really tired. That is a, that's <laughs> this a guy's health not tired. Issue. It's a Thankfully, here's a good note. The dude lost a lot of weight, and so his, his life's he, on the up and up. Yeah, he could have been going It was scary it. back then. Yeah. And I'll say this about everybody that was there, and I, they probably get, people would probably say the same thing about me. You know, sometimes in your life, you know, you're struggling, and, and those the, the folks that work there, they're just trying to provide for their kids because most of them had six or seven kids. That's that's <laughs> Some of that's an exaggeration, some of it's not. But they had so many kids, and it was like they're just trying to provide, you know, and they're just – but. The drama that they had outside of work, it, they, they brought it with them. They brought it with them, and it was constant. I mean, constant baby daddies showing up, you know, people leaving in the middle of their shift so that they could get, bail their baby daddy out of jail. I mean, it was, it was, it, and we had to cover shifts, and they would sneak out the back door. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I, I wrote one down that I thought of the other day. Uh, disagreement. It was like. If we admitted the wrong person in our facility, it was like the feds were going to come and, sh- and shut us down, literally. Well, that's, is that, that, is that's that... kind of almost what happened because <laughs> what what led to, because when I came on board at the assisted living place, they hired me on as like an, an, an administrative assistant to the executive director, almost like, you know, almost like an assistant executive yeah, director. Yeah. And I absolutely loved that gig. It was a great mix of managing a few people, managing the schedule, managing some logistics, managing some work orders. And just making things happen without Jason having to micromanage the entire Correct. place. Yeah. I, I absolutely loved it. And but uh, when I came on board there, of course, that, that was back in uh, 2000 and maybe 12 or 13. You know, you you still wore suits to work. Yeah. And so when I came in, they thought I was from corporate. <laughs> they thought I was there to continue corporate investigations into yeah. this place. Little did I know. And after about a couple of days or so, I'm like, guys, I'm not with corporate. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're in the break room and we're eating a subway sandwich. What did you guys do before to, to make get all this heat on you guys? Come to find out, they had a a, a small memory care for sp- specialized care for Alzheimer's and dementia, and it was you know twelve apartments down this hallway. And prior to us even hearing about this place or even knowing what it was, they had some caregivers there that were that that they they didn't take good care of the people there, sure. and they didn't and they did it for so long that families got involved, families pursued an attorney, and families contacted the local news. And this was a small city that we worked at. And yeah. so back then, local news and newspapers were a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And so the state came in and investigated and said, yeah, we're pulling your license to conduct memory care here, and you can't get it back until you guys do this whole long list of, you know, whatever. And corporate said, okay, that was a huge failure. We just hired a bunch of terrible people sure. and didn't know what to do with it once it got out of control. You guys just focus on assisted living. So, yeah, so they thought I was part of this corporate investigation, and it took them a couple of weeks to realize, oh, okay, that's Well, the, the folks that we heard then, you know, a T-shirt, I mean, they thought you were part, <laughs> part of, of the corporate. Part yeah. of the corporate. They were traumatized by the corporate oh, investigation. Oh, my gosh. Well, and I, I'll say this, and that was, I, for any facility, you want to be able to have, and for, as far as for sales folks, you want to be able to have access to memory care and the assisted living, because at the assisted living, if they need an extra level of care, they don't have to go to, they can actually go to Stay the, there. Yeah, stay there. Um, and it's it's easier for the for the. For the, the residents, for the family, mm-hmm. and so, you, but we didn't have access to that, and so it was literally it was a tough it was a tough sale. I mean, it was a it was a tough tough sale, and for the amount of money. So I don't know if you knew this. Uh, I actually still owed money. They owe me money, but uh, I never have really pursued it. But the the our commission. So basically, we would, I would get six hundred dollars per move in. Mm-hmm. Well, when we had the whole corporate changeover, oh, they cut it in half to three hundred dollars. And I only got $300 if I had moved 10 residents in that month. Well, we got to a point where we were, we only had like three rooms left. So it was like, I didn't have any, I didn't have anything to sell. So, I mean, I'm so I was making zero, zero bonuses, you know? And so if we kept, if we kept the resident, you know, I mean, you know, whether they didn't move somewhere, or, you know, obviously uh, no one passed away or anything. Cause these folks are, I mean, they're in their you know middle yeah. to upper eighties, you know, some of them. And uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it was just, I didn't have anything to sell. So, Making no money. I mean, making <laughs> peanuts for the amount of time that we had to spend there. Oh gosh. Oh, it was. It was. We were. I was making less. I had to be making less than minimum wage for the amount of time that we spent there. Doing one of the things that we that we did is we were involved with the activities director as well. But we would put on these pancake breakfasts. They wanted us to do. Oh yeah. Pancake bre- breakfasts, and they wanted us to invite everybody in the community. Well, <clears> when we first started going, no one wanted to come to our our facility. I mean, it was you know and. The, because we were the facility that tried to exactly. try, tried to kill these old people, and unbeknownst to me, which was a whole year a year ago, unbeknownst to me, I didn't know that they had gone through that. So I'm yeah. coming in like, oh, this place is great. Oh, have you heard the you heard the terrible things back there? 
And so, and I'm like, and so, and I will say this, they, they did get rid of, they did a great job of, of cleaning house yeah. and, and getting rid of the, the folks that should not have been there. But, uh, oh my gosh. I mean, it was, it was, they wanted, we've had to do a breakfast at least once a month. Uh-huh. We were doing, I was doing lunches with, with, you know, uh, referrals, you know, like caseworkers and stuff like that. And I would do that. But um, our regional sales director, she, I mean, she just loved the, excuse me, she loved the frilly stuff, you know, wanted me to make baskets. And, I, and I'm like, <laughs> listen, lady, like, let me just go out and sell. I don't even make it bad. And yeah. that's just part of, and I, I think we had talked before, it's very, you know, women in that, in that world, they do very good. And they're very good with, with patient care and stuff like that. And even on the sales side, they just, they have a, a very womanly touch, which it goes really well. And I just didn't have that. Yeah. And so um, it probably was more, you know, my shortcomings than, <laughs> than Well, anything. like me, you're, you're into, okay, let's get them in the tour. Mm-hmm. Let's do the follow-up. Let's, let's, let's make them a great offer on this apartment. Yep. And that works, but then they have their, they've got a gift for that stuff. And sure. that works too. Yep. Yeah. They had their, they had their own way. And, and we were like, yeah, we were very just sort of, let's get them in. Let's just sell. Let's just sell. And uh, you know, what was, I will say this, and I was very fortunate because Jason, which is our executive director, would could sell, and then Michael, he would also. I mean, he would also. He would also sell. You didn't know. So I, mean, I started to learn. Yeah, you know? and because he, he, we would have to do tours, and and in fact, I would rather them, the people, go with them and do the tour, and then come back with me, and then we can talk numbers because yeah, yeah. They, the residents are going to be dealing with them, and the family they're going to be dealing with them more than than they would the you know the sales guy. So man, it was a lot of fun. though. Oh gosh, do you remember the day that we got snowed in? Do you remember that? I don't know if you remember. Vaguely, but yeah, we, I remember it was at the same time. You might have been off. You might have been off. Was off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like we were never off. But you, I, for some reason, because I, I was like, what's well, snowing? We got to go home. And Jason's like, oh, no, we, we will, we'll spend the night. I said, I, spend the night. I, <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. a second here. Whoa. I'm like, I'm not part of ops here. I'm, I'm just, there's You're nobody just the sales guy. It just, is, and it is 458. <laughs> what are you talking about spending yeah, the night? 358, trying to get the heck out of there. <laughs> like, my gosh. Well, and this is typical stuff. So, you know, we would always, you know, you got to stay there till five o'clock or six or whatever it was. Well, uh, so I would go, I would try to make my rounds, you know, we go see my marketing, you know, about three o'clock. That way I could just, you know, I'll do marketing for an hour and then I'd, you know, go home at four. Um, and always inevitable at about, at about, you know, 4.15, I'm on the interstate heading back to Chattanooga. Oh, uh, well, we need you here. We got a, we got a patient tour. Can you come back? And I'm like, oh gosh, like just, oh, it was brutal. Yeah. It was brutal. So, um, and then they made me work every other Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, and of course you guys were used to that. I mean, that's what you guys did. All I kind time. of volunteered for that. I'm like, Saturdays are cool, man. I'll do, I'll do these tours because I was I was finally getting my hands a little bit dirty in, in the sales world. And I'm yeah. like, I really like this. Yeah. Because Saturdays you would have at least one or two tours during that. Oh, day. absolutely, absolutely. And I really enjoyed kind of running with that. But uh, yeah, I always I always like when I left, I'm like, they should just put you in the sales role because you you had dealt with all the families and the referral aspect. I just would assume like, well, they just put, put Michael in the sales role. He can. We did for I, I did that for a little bit, and then we were without. A director again, yeah, and then I was that. having to do both, and then I'm like, you know what? I tell you what pays more is the job that I'm doing already. Yeah, and so that's that's how that worked out. But, gotcha. Uh, well, so I, I'm pretty sure I shared this one with you. So I would take this commute. I would have to go through Cahutta, Georgia, there on Dalton Pike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in the middle of Cahutta, Georgia, is this kangaroo gas station? I guess I know exactly <laughs> where this where this gas station is. And I know exactly. to this day, there are still a couple of those local guys. I think his name is Barney. Yeah. Super nice guy. He's kind of like, you know, he works at a farm or something during the day. But in the morning, he sits at this gas station inside, talks with the uh, with the, with the the girls working the register. Semi-security, you know. Yeah. Just talking to people that he knows. Coming, he's providing <laughs> semi-security there. Half off biscuits. Yeah. The morning. And then he goes and works in the farm. Yeah. <laughs> guy comes back that night. And him and these buddies set up these $10 lawn chairs. And I have tried to take a picture of it. Oh please, dude! You need to. You but need to they are time. still to this day. They sit in the in a couple of the handicap spots there. To, like to, they'll be there tonight, right. probably. And they just kind of chill there and talk about what happened at the farm. I should go buy another. Beer. That's actually so. Cahutta. I live in East Brainerd, and I can go to through Cahutta to cut over. I should do that. I yeah, should yeah, go, you I should. Need, and see if they're because I'm gonna tell you something. I, I know exactly where that that kangaroo gas station is. Well, I would stop there every morning for my big thing of coffee on my way to work. Michael would always bring in coffee. It, it was gigantic. It thing. was a gallon. He might as well should have had a backpack full of, 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 of Java. I drink less of it now, but they had some really good coffee there. And, you know, and it was just kind of like my morning We're, thing. You know? Yeah, routine, yeah. And so it was the same guy at the register, <clears throat> Barney, with his coveralls and his John Deere hat. <laughs> now, after about four weeks of seeing this guy every morning in a row, and he's like, say, um... Where about you work around here? What is it you do, boy? Because I remember I'm in a suit. 
So I look like a funeral director or an attorney <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> and I'm here in this gas station with these country guys. Michael would always wear a black suit every day. He would always wear a black suit. That's all I had. Yeah, it black was, suit and 500 shirts shirt, and ties. Yeah, yeah. What, black, sh black suit, white shirt, and then <laughs> usually a. he would sometimes wear a black tie. Sometimes he'd wear... Uh, you didn't stray off from the darks. That's all, you know, you would, you would have a purple tie. You would have a, some somewhat of a festive tie sometimes. Yeah. I, I, did, yellow, I didn't yellow. get other colors until I just got out of my, out of my color <laughs> scheme. But, uh, and he's like, so what, what is it you do? And so I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of work here and I work there. And so I would have to go. I, I don't want to get locked into this conversation yeah. with Barney. I, I've got to, I've got to go to work. So I know I'm going to see you for the rest of my life every morning. So I'll just, I'll let you in on bits as I go. And <laughs> several months later, he's like, now, do you work at the at the nursing home? What was it called? And I was like, I know I work at this assisted living place. Yes. And he's like, hmm, boy, that does sound familiar. And that's how the conversation <laughs> would, boy, that does sound familiar. Is that that place where you where all tried to kill those old people at? <laughs> Is that the one across from the high, high school? school? And I'm going, oh, my God. Well, and here's, here's what's crazy. How, and I went back to work that day, and I, I gathered the caregivers around, and I'm like, what did y'all do to these people last year? There's uh, a guy in the middle of nowhere, yeah. Georgia. That knows. That knows about what y'all did last year. How and, bad was it? And that's the thing. Like, I didn't even know. I was coming into sale. I had no idea what had gone on. Like, you know, I, I I had no idea that. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to literally, literally sell my rear end off. And, you know, it's like, no, mm -hmm. like, no, you, you have no idea what, what uh, had gone on here. Like, no idea. And so, yeah, that was, uh, that was crazy. That what happened there was, you know, and, and corporate office so cleaned up and everything, but it was wild, man. I mean, it was, it was wild. I'll tell you this one, one day I had a tour come in in late afternoon and the son and the daughter, they come in, I bring them into your office, yeah. your really nice office. I sit them down. I'm about to show them the paperwork. And we have this form that we've got to fill out just mm -hmm. these 300 questions about your mom and dad. And the guy's like, before you get started <laughs> on your form, <laughs> your little, your little piece of paper, <laughs> you tell me why, after all you guys have done to these old people, why should I move my mama in there? <laughs> mama. <laughs> and I'm just like, what in the world did y'all do to these people? And, and this was now two years later. Yeah, two fact. years removed, yeah. And so I remember talking to regional. I'm like, let me tell you guys why you're having such a problem with this occupancy here. This was my tour based on something that had happened two years ago. Yeah. This was my tour today. This is what they told me today. Well, and here, you know, they so that leads into this. Now I want let me let me go off on a tangent here a second. Michael, when you know when he entered the facility and when he got hired, Michael had slick black hair, slick slick back hair, jet black, was all black. He had a beard. I had more. Yeah, it, yeah, more, we all did. Uh, and here's the thing: My, he wore that black suit. He looked like he was in the mafia. I mean, he really did. He could have. You thought like, who is this guy? And I saw him. I'm like, because I thought the same thing. I'm like, well, Michael's part of co corporate, right? I mean, you know. And so, but you did, you look like you were the mafia. I, and I loved it. I loved the look because it scared some of the residents, which was good. And it scared some of the, our staff. So kept them in line a little bit. But, um, but no, that leads us to, so we had a very, we had an occupancy problem. Um, I think we had one wing that wasn't even full. I mean, it was, Completely empty. Yeah, it was like, it was maybe 15 apartments. And so, uh, so anyway, I got a call from our regional director and regional director of sales. And she says, uh, hey, I've nominated you guys to be part of a pilot program. And I told Michael and Jason, and we're like, oh, this is not good. This is, this is you not. You don't want to be part of the pilot program. No. And it was between us and another facility in her region. But she covered, she had like four, maybe five or six facilities. We had, it was probably, what, 30 facilities that we had across the United States. And so we were like, oh, let's, let's not, let's don't be part of this. And we got the call like a week later that we were going to be part. And so what a, they. A focus. A focus. A focus community. Focus community. We were a focus And community. those words sound nice. <laughs> and, and you're going to go tell your wife about it and your kids, but it's not good. Mm -mm. It's not good. So, because what it meant is that we were going to work longer hours and work, you know, like some, you know, some of your all's work, you know, you, you can work eight hours a day, but you're not constantly working eight hours a day. I mean, you got, you have some lag time. I mean, you can, you know, you've got some time to, you can space out a little bit, you know, but you're there eight hours, but you're not physically working eight hours a day. No, we were there 10 to 12 hours and we were physically working. 10 to 12, 12 hours. There was no stop. There was no and break. It was just reports. It was just extra reports is what I think it equaled out to you guys for. Well, and so, you know, he talked about we'd have a, a Monday morning stand-up meeting at 9 o'clock. Well, our we this team that they had assembled, so they brought in this team. It was a corporate team. They were comprised of VPs, and then they had a consultant. And the consultant, she was great. Uh, I mean, Carrie, she was unbelievable, nice. But these people that they had assembled across corporate was, I mean, they were just... 
out of the realm of reality. When you guys watch The Office and you... It, oh, Robert California. <laughs> when you look at your, your typical sitcom with regional people, mm -hmm. vice president people, those characters are actually real people. And so we were introduced to these real characters and real... But these were just real people that yep. were regionals and divisionals that were in charge of this corporate assisted living empire. And as a focus community, because the revenue was down, the people moving in was down, they swooped in. Swooped. swooped. They swooped in to save this community. And so for, was it a week? I mean, it was it, it was an intensive for the first week, and then they would keep well, visiting. Yeah, but their first time. Was yeah, there. so they would come every they would come every week, and they would stay for two days. So they would get there, call it in mid morning, and then they would stay, and they wouldn't leave till probably the mid afternoon the next day. And uh, they did they did that for probably the first uh, probably the first two months. So they this this focus we our focus community they did it for six months, <laughs> and every morning at eight o'clock, not eight o five. Not at eight o'clock every morning, we had to jump on a call with them. And a lot of it, when they were there, we had to be there at eight, ready to go to talk about. And it was like you were talking about these leads and they would ask about, okay, well, you know, you've got this lead. Well, what's her, uh, you know, uh, what's her ailment or what's a comorbidity? And it's like, okay, you knew it. Okay, what's her second comorbidity? Well, you know, you'd start, okay. And then, oh, well, what's her eye color? And then, you know, does what's it matter? You know, does it, I mean, like, none of this mattered. Like, you know, like, what's Dr. Johnson's favorite, uh, you know, favorite candy? It's like, why does that matter? Well, because we need to we need to drop gifts because off. Because if you really had relationships, br 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 uh, and they're grasping, they're so desperate uh, to to almost uh, justify their purpose to exist in these regional divisional roles, they're grasping for straws. They were clowns, absolute clowns. <laughs> All of them were clowns, and I say that in full wholeheartedly, and I have no remorse because they were they acted like clowns. Uh, except it was funny. Except, there, there was a couple of good ones. Yeah, but, there, so but they called themselves the Boost Team, and that was boost. the best part about it. They were coming in there to boost oh. y'all's occupancy. I wasn't really on the boost team's radar because I was number two in operations. Although we tried to drag him into it because we needed help. <laughs> but uh, I, I was able to successfully dodge all of those uh, inquisitions because I had to work on the schedule. Well, we had the, the 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 regional folks were good. So we had a guy yeah. that was regional ops. He was fine. We had a loved regional. Him. Yeah, loved, loved Jerry. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry was great. We had a regional cell, Anita. She was great. That, yeah. It's not those folks. It was the high, it was the VPs that thought that their stuff didn't stink. And typical corporate, what you see, they're out of touch with reality. They have no idea what's going on in the facility. They just have this, this agenda and they're going to drive the agenda. And it, it was just like what we really needed was time to build relationships in the community is what we needed. And, you know, they, but they wanted it structured to a T. And not say that was bad, but it was just some of it was so out of the realm of reality that it could not even been done. Like they, I, I walked past y'all's office one day and they, or just how, how the, the, the room was full anyway, I guess, but it looked like Jason was in the middle in a chair and you could just see the, the divisional people that was really just, just really getting them with these questions. And then, we would Jason. get drilled with questions. There would be eight. There was eight of them that would sit around, and Jason would get drilled with questions. And Jason all, was the, all points. The best thing that happened to that place, like here's oh. here's the guy that's going to help you, yes. and you guys are just being jerks for the sake of being jerks because it's cool to be a jerk and leave at five o'clock in your in your convertible and come back and do it again tomorrow. Man, I, I felt I felt bad for him. Well, and none of them liked being there because where we were at, we were in a small town. We were not. We were basically in between two big cities, and so if they flew into one city, if they flew into Atlanta then they're going to have to drive an hour, probably an hour, hour and 20 minutes to even get to the facility. If they flew into another city, they couldn't get flights in in Chattanooga. And so it was, we were just sort of in the middle of nowhere. And they hate, they hate, the reason that they just hated being there. They did not want to be there just as much as, as, as we wanted them being there. Um, it was just, but Jason would get drilled every day. And then it was my turn. And then I would get drilled. And they would never let me and Jason be in there at the same time because we would, I would help him. Sometimes he, he didn't know things that I knew and then vice versa because we, the way we dealt with residents and, mm -hmm. and potential, you know, uh, potential residents that would move in. And so, you know, he would talk about, you know, Mrs. Smith, for example, and he might not know everything about Mrs. Smith, but I do. And so I would chime in and they did not like that. They wanted us to both know about everything. And so I felt bad for him because I think it, it burned him out. It really did. I, and I, it didn't help. No, it did not help because he was, as the sales guy, I would never try to be all, everything. I would just, I would try to get the families to introduce to Michael because he was great at what he did. He dealt with the residents. He dealt with the family. I tried to introduce him to Jason because Jason dealt with the families. He dealt with, he dealt with a lot of the residents um, on day-to-day -day things. And that's who the families were going to be seeing. And so if they weren't comfortable with them, they weren't going to move their, their family member in. 
And so, uh, so that's who I really wanted to get the families in front of because it was easier for me to close the deal, you know. Um, but <laughs> my gosh, the 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 boost team was just and so it eventually oh, yeah. got better because they finally said, okay, these guys know what the heck they're doing. But the, we would go down the halls literally just yelling boost team <laughs> like at the top of our lungs, boost team. <laughs> like join the assisted living community. Via how? Via, well, it's interesting. I, so I, I was working at the city of Chattanooga for, I worked there for about three years, and a uh, new mayor was uh, was end of his term, and so they are going to be elected a new mayor. And there's a lot of things that had happened under that regime that, uh, that I was like, well, you know what, it's probably just time to, uh, you know, take my talents elsewhere. <laughs> so, so anyway, I ended up, I ended up getting a job at, uh, ended up getting a job at, the, the assisted met. living the, place. The assisted living place. Because you had a background in selling like medical equipment, pharmaceuticals, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, business so, business I, yeah uh, DME is what I had sold. And, and so I was, you know, part of the job at assist, assisted, uh, the assisted living community was we had to go market to doctors and, mar or, you know, market at least to the offices, you know, for placement for folks that they needed the, they needed the services. So I had done, I had done a lot of that. And, uh, and so it wasn't hard for me to go in there. I sort of knew the lay of the land going into a doctor's office. So uh, that's really sort of how I got the, how I got the job. I had been in, I had been in sales prior to, uh, obviously, to the city, so or the city of Chattanooga. So yeah, it, it sort of fit fit well with the with the, with the community, as we with, as we would say. It's called a community. Community, That's right? <clears throat> Not a facility. So you know, one of the things now the regulations could have changed. I'm just telling you from you know when I worked there, but you know they had to be they had to be ambul ambulatory, or they had to be able to propel themselves in a wheelchair in uh, the event of an evacuation. Evacuations, yeah, because this wasn't a you know a nursing home is where somebody has to take physically take care of them. The folks that we dealt with. They could take care of themselves, but they had meals provided for, their medication dispensed. Um, they actually had room check. I think one of the added things they could, you know, get their room cleaned and different different things. Um, and so I remember one instance, literally, you know, and I'm trying to get as many people in there as we can, possible. as possible, because I, you know. And so I went over to the hospital. Lady's about to get discharged, and they're like, "Yeah, this is a, you know, I got a referral from a doctor. Uh, you know, this guy, this lady's going to be perfect." Well. Our, the nurse, I, I sent our nurse to go do the the charge, you know, to, to do the, the intake, assessment. assessment, yeah. And she gets, she comes back and she's like, no, they're, they don't qualify. And I said, and she said no to so many things, 24 the, hours a day. That, it was, but here's the thing though. I had probably had three or four other potential residents turned down like prior to that. And so I was like on a zero for the month. I mean, it was like, oh, I've already, yeah, and, you know, oh, sales. But, and you can't have that. Oh, yeah. no, not at all. And so, so what I did is I was like, you know what, I'm gonna see if this lady, and so I go over to the uh, to the hospital, and the, the the nurse that's in the room, I asked her, I said, hey, is this lady, can she function on her own a little bit? And she goes, well, yeah, and uh, she can she can actually roll in a wheelchair. I said, well, I'm gonna video it. Right. So so what I did is the, the sweet little old lady got into this wheelchair, and she rolled across the room, and I took a video <clears> of it. Well, I come back, and I say, hey, we're gonna admit her. Well, our nurse did not like that. Our nurse, Our corporate nursing did not like that. And so, anyway, uh, come to find out, we ended up admitting her because, hey, she was ambulatory, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, that rub was always there. And um, it wasn't just a, a calm disagreement. It was like, if we admitted the wrong person in our facility, it was like the feds were going to come and, sh <laughs> and shut us down, literally. Well, that's, is that, that, is that's that... kind of almost what happened because... <laughs> 